Hmm. Buckle up. Hi, I'm Erin Jean McDowell, and welcome to this episode of Bake It Up a Notch Bite Size. I am so excited today because we are going to be sharing one of the first recipes from my new cookbook, Savory Baking. Today, we're making pitas. Let's get baking. One of my very first jobs in a professional kitchen was as a bread baker, and I just love the process of baking bread. But specifically, different flatbreads are really easy to kind of work into your day-to-day -day life, your regular weekly meals. It's a lot of fun and they are really flexible. And pita is a really, really fun one to make. And the difference in eating a fresh, beautiful, warm pita versus one that you get at a store or even at a favorite restaurant is just completely different. So let's get going. The coolest part for me about bread is that the mixing method is not always super complicated. It's pretty much, let's put this all in a bowl and mix it to combine. So our ingredients here, we've got some all-purpose flour. As always, the recipe is linked in the video description below, so you can head there for all the amounts and the detailed method breakdown. I'm also gonna add some whole wheat flour. And this isn't very much as you can see, but it gives it a little bit of extra texture, a little bit of nuttiness, it's delicious. We've also got a good amount of salt. We gotta make sure our bread has got flavor. And we have some yeast and some olive oil. And finally, some warm water. We're gonna mix this on low speed for about three minutes until the dough starts to come together. Then we'll knock that speed up to about medium speed and we'll mix it for two minutes more. If you want to, you can also mix this dough by hand and it'll take you about five to seven minutes of kneading. All right, so I've finished that first three minutes of mixing and one of the ways that you can tell that it is ready is it has fully picked up and formed into a ball around the dough hook. This is sometimes called the pickup stage when you're mixing bread because at the beginning it might even look soupy or soft, but the more it mixes and kneads, the more it comes together. So after we've kind of fully picked up everything from the sides of the bowl, then it's a good time to raise our speed and we'll mix for two minutes more. At the end of the pickup stage, the dough will still look a little shaggy or rough, but after those two minutes of mixing, it should be in pretty great shape. It should be really nice and smooth and uh, kind of a really perfect consistency. So I'm ready to go ahead and transfer this. I've got a greased bowl here, and I'm just gonna transfer the whole dough, kind of form it into a rough ball and put it in here, and then we will let it rise for an hour or an hour and a half, it's going to kind of depend on your environment. If it's nice and hot and summery where you are, it's probably only gonna take an hour. If you've got your AC blasting, it might take more like an hour and a half. So for this particular dough, keep an eye out for it doubling in size. I'm gonna just go ahead and form this into a bit of a ball, kind of coat it in that oil. It's looking beautiful. So let's let this rise in a warm place for an hour, an hour and a half. I'm gonna go grab another dough we've already mixed so that we can move right on to shaping. All right, here is some dough that has already been rising. It's really looking beautiful. Now, bakers especially love to do things precise, right? So the next stage of this pita would be dividing it into eight even pieces. If you wanna be really, really intense about this, grab your kitchen scale and each of these eight pieces are gonna be about 90 grams each. But I wanna also take this as an opportunity to show you how when I don't feel like getting out the scale and I still want them to be really, really close to the same size, how I like to divide it. So first I'm gonna give myself a little flour on the surface. I'm actually using whole wheat flour as my bench flour today. You could use all purpose or bread flour too. I just kind of like that little bit of extra texture from the whole wheat. After I lift it out of the bowl, I try not to squish it too much. I try to just keep it kind of in that even layer as it is. And then I use my hands to form it into a bit of a rectangular shape. I want it to have straight sides and noticeable corners. And I want it to be a roughly even thickness. And that's because basically I'm just trying to make a shape that's easy to divide into eight even pieces. And something that's like a rectangle is a lot simpler. So I'll go ahead and cut this in half. And 
What's cool is here I've got this bench knife here and it actually has measurements on it. So I can even say, okay, this is about six inches, so I need it to be three. And so I can just kind of mark it like that to get as much precision as possible without taking the time to get out the scale again and, and all of those things. I just had an idea. No. <laughs> but the other thing you can do is instead of measuring it, now we're just going to say, okay, we need to get four pieces from each of these. So first divide it about in half as best as you can and then divide each of those halves in half. Now again, this isn't going to be perfectly precise and these pitas are likely going to be a tiny bit different. But in this application, especially when I'm making it for a meal or something at home, that's one time that for me, I don't mind it being a little bit more rustic. You know what, we should wait there. To see? Oh, we could do that. You want to? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what is your cost? 90 grams. That's pretty not bad. Yeah. Oh! 90. This one's going to be too small. Ready? Yep. Yeah. That Holy one's a fatty. So that was pretty good, though. That was pretty really good. That was pretty good. And I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to redo them but you could. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just gonna round each of these into a ball. This is in the formal bread baking method. This is known as pre-shaping. And what pre-shaping is, is that during the dividing process, you are working that dough a tiny bit. So basically we wanna give it a chance to be close to how its final shape is gonna be, but then give it a little bit of a chance to rest and relax, continue proofing a little bit. So what we're gonna do is round each of these, just place them on a lightly floured section of our work surface, and then we'll leave them to rest for about 15 minutes and we'll come back to do the final shaping. And you can cover them with a clean kitchen towel or some lightly greased plastic wrap. Uh, just make sure that they're not too constricted. We don't wanna put anything on them too tight that's gonna weigh them down. We just wanna kind of cover them to prevent the dough from drying out. Now with this last piece, we've talked about this in our roll episode of Bake It Up a Notch, but let's just do a little refresher, shall we, of how to make a perfect round. I like to start by folding the dough over onto itself a couple of times to kind of start getting the round shape. Then we flip it over so that seam is on the bottom, and then we're really using this part of our hand, kind of the outer heel of our hand. And we're gonna move our hand in this shape, and the ideal is, if you do this properly, there should really be no visible seam on the bottom. And there you go, see? It's just a little nubbin, it's perfect. All right, I'm gonna cover this with a clean kitchen towel, give these a short rest, and we'll come back for our final shaping. Our pre-shaped pita rounds have been resting for 15 minutes, so now let's get them shaped to go into the oven. All right, I always love unfolding the towel from dough because it's like untucking someone into bed. It's like, hello, good morning. So a few different tips about rolling out pita. I like to roll them out on a piece of parchment paper. And there's a few different reasons I like to do this on the parchment. When a flatbread dough has something to cling to as you're rolling it out, it allows you to roll it a little bit thinner. And in this case, we're trying to get these about six inches. We don't want them to be too thin, but you can literally see it's shifting on the parchment, but at the same time, then when I stop, it's kind of attaching itself to that parchment. See, just like that. See how it came up and the parchment. So it's starting to get to this point where it's sticking to the parchment, but that allows me to get to the thinness that I want. So not only is the dough able to cling to it, but it's also going to make it easier for us to bake this pita. Pita likes to be baked at a super high temperature. We've got our oven preheating to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, and we have a baking steel or pizza stone in the oven. If you don't have either of those things, you can use a cast iron skillet. And what that's going to do is that extra burst of heat is what's gonna help that pita puff up and make the signature pocket in the center. So we're gonna just keep rolling these until it's about six inches. That's about how wide these rectangles tangles are. So I'm about there already. And I can just kind of move it to the side, grab another piece and roll out my next pita. 
and just keep on going until we have eight beautiful round pieces of pita. So I've got a stack of eight beautiful pita here and I've got a nice hot preheated oven. So what I like about using the parchment paper is it allows me to just slide these right into the oven and as it bakes, it's going to naturally release itself from that parchment paper. But also because the pitas might be have some slight variances or even your oven might have some slight variances, um, it's really helpful to be able to just take out one if it's done, because when you overcook pita, it gets very crunchy and will miss that little bit of chew. So we're gonna go ahead and start baking these in batches. So let's head over to the oven. All right, so my oven is nice and hot. I've got my baking steel in there. I'm gonna go ahead and start by doing like three or four at a time, and they take two to four minutes to get nice and puffed up, and they are gonna get a little bit of browning as well. All right, so the goal here is to give them enough space that they have that circulation around them. And also be careful, if you're uneasy going into the oven, I have hands that seem to have no feeling left in them, not surprisingly. So use just a long spatula to slide them in, or if you have a pizza peel, this is a great place to bring that out too. All right, these are looking really good. I'm gonna go ahead and pop them out. Woo, come here, you. Look at it, so puffy. And we do wanna take them out before they get too much browning, only because like I said, that browning is going to equate to crispiness. And we want light, fluffy pita. We don't necessarily want super duper crispy pita. Love you. Love you. Come here, you. Love you too. I know I need to save these so that we have plenty of pita to make sandwiches with, but I have got to dive into one of these right now. They smell so, so good. It's honestly the most incredible smell while they are baking. Hold on. It's so hot. Hold on. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Look at that beautiful pocket that we have inside there for filling with things. And most importantly, we have this piece for me to eat right now. <laughs> it honestly doesn't need anything. Like I would love to have something to dip or slather, but there is so much flavor and there is nothing like eating warm bread of any kind. It is so, so delicious and truly so, so easy. So I really hope that this inspires you to make some pita in your own kitchen. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Bake It Up A Notch Bite Size, where I brought out one of the first new recipes from my new cookbook, Savory Baking. I couldn't be more excited to share it. As always, this recipe is linked in the video description below. I hope this inspires you to try making your own pita at home. Be sure to use hashtag bake it up a notch. I always love to see what you are making. Until next time, happy baking. Yeah.